So I hope that even now she celebrates that her brother has been withdrawn or redeemed from the rabble. And we are seeing reports already this morning that he's fine and he's well. I hope that this will cause you to think about your life and ask yourself, what are you going to do if your life has to come to an end today? Yeah, though I walk through the valley at the shadow of death. Hello, once more, welcome back to the channel. My name is Fidelis, and this is on Fire for Christ, where we talk about the things that are happening in our Ghanaian Christian circles in Africa and the world beyond. And um, yesterday, we heard some terrible news coming from Turkey concerning an earthquake that has struck some parts of the country. And there were videos flying all over social media showing um, so many buildings that had collapsed. And um, <laughs> And so I send out my heartfelt condolences to um, the families and people who have lost their loved ones. And um, but as Ghanaians, we are really concerned because one of our own um, Christian Achu was involved in the whole earthquake situation. And so what happened was that we began to hear on social media, on Twitter and Facebook and all of them that um, he has been caught in a rubble, that he and another sporting director were caught in this rubble as well as other players. But we heard that the other players had been recovered from the rubble and it was left with them. And so from yesterday, there were many messages that were flying all over social media people praying for Achu and his life that he should be saved and he should be well people were praying to god and uh, it was beautiful to see that people value the life of their brother that loving your neighbor extends to this aspect of your life as well that everybody wants to see all of us alive and so this thing makes you wonder why is life so precious why is life so valuable why don't people want to lose their people? You think about these things and, and sometimes this is how my brain works that you want to, why are people so worried? And you get to understand that life is precious. Life is valuable because life has a certain meaning. But what is this meaning that is in life that everybody wants to hold on to and not lose it? And the truth of it is that nobody wants to lose their lives. You can see an old woman who has lived almost all her life and even she when she's crossing the road she's careful to cross the road because she doesn't want to be hit by a car and die everybody wants to hold on to life and this is the reason why i don't understand why many people reject the one person that can give you life forevermore if indeed life is as precious as many people deem it to be and many people want to hold on to this life forevermore. Why do many people reject the only one who is able to give you this? And by this, I talk about the only one, Jesus Christ. Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that anyone whosoever believes in his name, in him, will not perish but have everlasting life. That the life you have, that the life you have in Christ is not a life only meant for this life, but it is meant for an everlasting life, that you have this life forevermore. It says that I go to my father's house and I prepare a place for you, that where I am you will be also. And so the preciousness of this life and the assurance that we receive in Jesus Christ, a man that lived, a man that people saw, a man that had many people who witnessed to his existence, of his birth, of his life, of his death, and of his resurrection. And many people saw him. And this testament has been given that many people will come to this faith. And so you ask and you wonder that, why do people want to do things on their own? Why do people want to solve this equation on their own? And so you get to realize that when people or when men or human beings have everything in order, we think that we are the ones in charge. We think that nobody can tell us what to do. But only when we get into issues or trouble is when we want to cry out unto God. People think that their strength is in themselves, but this is not the way it works. Because Bible makes us understand in the book of Hebrews 9, 27 that, 
It is appointed unto every man to die once, and after that, there comes a certain judgment that is waiting for us all. And so, God forbid, if anything should have happened to our true, he will be facing God on his own to give an account of for what he has done in his body, whether it be good or it be bad. And the same thing goes to you that whatever life we live on this earth, there's one day going to be a time that we have to give an account. And you don't want to find yourself wanting because it is either we sit with our Father in heaven or we'll go to the place where there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth, which I love you so much that I don't want you to be there. I love you so much because I don't have to know you before I can love you. When I see you going in danger, because of the love I have for you, I have to rush and draw you from the danger. I don't have to know you to be able to do that. And so I hope that even as we celebrate that our brother has been redrawn or redeemed from the rubble, and we are seeing reports already this morning that he's fine and he's well, I hope that this will cause you to think about your life and ask yourself, What are you going to do if your life has to come to an end today? Jesus is standing on your door. He's standing on the door of your heart and he's knocking. If only you open, he will be there to come and make his home with you and his father. I'll see you on the next one. If you have stayed through to the end of this video, it means that you enjoy the video. You like the video. You like what you have seen. Kindly go ahead, subscribe to my channel and like this video. This is how far this video will go far. I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.